Hey guys, it's Lola here and welcome back to my YouTube channel or welcome if it's your very first time watching a video of mine. On this channel, I create content around all aspects of growing up and gaining adult independence, including money, property, careers, and general well-being. Before we get started, please take a second to click subscribe if you haven't already and hit the bell so you don't miss any videos from me. This week is Pension Awareness Week, so I thought it was as good a time as ever to talk about workplace pensions and what is essentially free money from your employer and the tax man. So if you're a little bit confused with your workplace pension, want to know what it is and how it could be working for you, stick around. Firstly, a disclaimer. I am not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. I'm just a keen content creator with a background in HR, wanting to share the knowledge I have to help other people where I can. If you want financial advice, you need to go to a financial advisor, just to be clear. If you're watching this video, based on my channel stats, you're probably between the ages of 25 and 34, and you might be thinking, why am I talking about pensions for a long time before I retire? I don't have to think about that for ages, but that's not correct. Now is the time that we need to be thinking about what we're gonna do when we retire and how we're gonna sustain ourselves financially. I personally have watched enough panorama documentaries where they talk about heat or eat, and I know that I don't wanna be the kind of old person that has to think about whether I wanna choose heating or food today. I want both, I don't wanna go on holidays, and I'm sure I'm gonna to wanna to do lots of other stuff. So now is the time that we need to be planning for those things. First things first, what is a pension? A pension is a tax efficient way of saving for retirement. It's essentially a big pot of money that you pay into, the government pays into, and potentially your employer pays into. And that money is invested and grows over time and it's used to finance your lifestyle once you're no longer working. There are three main types of pensions, right? You have the state pension, and that's a pension that the government will give you as long as you've made um, national insurance contributions for a long enough period of time over your working life. Then there's a private pension which you can set up as an individual and you pay into and you also get some tax benefits there from the government. And then you have a workplace or occupational pension scheme which your employer sets up and you, the government and your employer pay into that and that's going to be the focus of this video, your workplace pension. If you meet the criteria, you will be automatically enrolled into your workplace pension. There's lots of criteria and I'll put a link to them below, but essentially for the sake of simplicity, if you're over 22 and work full time, you will meet the criteria. So every month, a percentage of your pay will be automatically deducted and put into your pension and in return, your employer will contribute. That money will be locked away until you're 55 and your pension scheme, the provider will invest that money and hope to grow it so that by the time you retire, there's more money there than was put in. If you are automatically enrolled onto your workplace pension, you can opt out, but please, please, please think twice before you do, not only because of, you know, panorama, heat or eat, you wanna have food and heating and all those nice things, but also because you'll be giving up free money. Yes, you'll be able to access that percentage of your pay that you see leaving every month, but you'll also be giving up the money that your employer's putting in. And that could be three, four, five, even 10% of your salary over and above what they're paying you. It's just free money, it's crazy. Um, the only catch is you can't have it now, you just need to have it later and you need money later anyway, so why not? And remember, on top of the money that your employer is putting in, the government is also putting in money too. So if you're a basic rate taxpayer, for every £80 you put in, the government will put in 20 And as a higher rate taxpayer, it's even more. So that essentially means the money is worth a lot more in your pension scheme than it is in your pocket. Let's say you're in a company which says they'll match your contributions up to a certain level. So if you have £80, you can either take £80 in cash or you can pay into your pension scheme and get 180 pounds. And that 180 pounds is made up of your 80 pounds, which you're putting in, your employer's 80 pounds, so 160 pounds, and the 20 pound, which the government is kicking in too. So it's kind of a no brainer. You can either take one cake now or more cakes later. At the risk of sounding like a loser, I do talk about pensions a lot, not only at work, I work in HR, but also with my friends and family, you know, heat or eat, trying to encourage them to like save and all that other kind of stuff. Um, and there's a few questions that I get, so I thought I'd just go through them now. One of the questions I get often is, how much do you have to contribute into your pension? And there are some minimum amounts, and the minimum amount is currently 8% overall, and that's 3% from your employer as a minimum and the balance from you. So it'd be 5% that you would have to contribute from your pay in order to get the 3% from your employer. 
but lots of companies pay over and above that. Lots of companies agree to match. So if you put in 5%, they'll put in 5%. If you put in 8%, they'll put in 8%. And some companies, you know, to incentivize you to save for retirement, they'll even contribute more than you do. So I had a company where I used to work, which would contribute 1.5 times up to 12%. So if I contributed 8%, they would contribute 12%. So each month, that's 20% of my base salary that's going into this pension pot, which is great, especially as I'm only paying 8% of that. Another question I get is what happens if I move jobs? If you move jobs, it's absolutely fine. You can transfer your pension pot from your old employer to your new employer pretty quickly. Uh, it's usually like a phone call and an online form or you can go into the portal and do it there, but it is super simple. If you choose not to move it or if you have pension pots from old employers that you haven't moved, that's fine. You know, you can leave them there and they'll be locked until, you know, you're 55 and you can collect from two, three, four, five pension pots. But ideally, you don't do that because for administration, it's harder to check what's going on with your five different pension pots. And also, there are management fees on each pension pot that you have. So you could be paying the fee five times where if you just put everything into one place, you'd only be paying that once. And there's no time limit on moving, you know, your pension pots around. So if you left an employer three years ago, that will just still be sitting there. So you can call up tomorrow and say, hey, can I move this across? And if you don't have the information, you can contact your old employer or maybe you might have have um, some emails that you were sent from your pension provider but usually if you call up you give them your name your date of birth some other security questions they should be able to locate it for you pretty easily the last thing you may be wondering is how does your workplace pension interact with the state pension so the workplace pension is supposed to supplement the state pension because you know for those of you wondering state pension is currently 175 pounds per week God knows what it will be like when I get there, more or less, but it's not a lot. It's around £750 a month. So unless you want to live like a basic BOAP, and I don't, you're going to need some money to supplement that. So it's not, for me, something that I would want to do to rely on my state pension because I can only imagine the kind of life that I want to live. And my state pension is probably not going to do that. So that's what the interaction is. If you have a workplace pension, you still get the state pension, but ideally you'd want to have both anyway. So that's it guys, that was my Pension 101. I've purposely kept it very simple because actually I think pensions themselves are a very simple topic, but it's something that can feel very complex and convoluted when we discuss them sometimes. I will link the government websites below so that you have full information on stuff like um, the auto-enrollment criteria and other things like that. If you have any questions on your own particular pension provider, it's better that you go to your HR, finance, payroll teams or whoever manages it within your organisation and they will usually be able to answer those sort of questions. If you have any questions for me, of course, comment below and I will answer them as soon as I can. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, like, comment, subscribe, share with your mates, all that good stuff. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.